We all want clean, safe drinking water, and farmers want to produce crops efficiently. But when costly nitrates and phosphates infiltrate surface waters, no one wins. Catchment Sensitive Farming is working to help farmers improve water quality while maximising their production. David Pett is a farmer in Suffolk. He farms cereals, oilseed rape and sugar beet. He realised he wasn't getting the best out of his soil. I knew we had some problems when um, certain parts of certain fields weren't performing as they should be. The crop didn't look quite as it ought to and um, some of the headlands were not performing as well as, as I would like. Um, I also import some farmyard manures from other farms and I started to become concerned about runoff and pollution and the neighbouring houses and I knew we had to do something about it. David started to work with national specialist Simon Draper, paid for by CSF. Simon starts off by carrying out a survey looking at the slopes that can cause runoff and pollution. Then it's time to dig deeper. Once we've done a survey looking at the slope and its likelihood of causing a problem to watercourses uh, through runoff or uh, to property or to roads or to sites of special scientific interest, uh, we then need to dig a hole. Digging a hole indicates where the compaction layer may be uh, and you can see in this situation we've dug a hole and we've got um, loose soil down to about 8 inches and then from there we've got a ridge formed which is a compacted layer and then it's quite soft actually around about 12 to 13 inches below that. The roots are coming out of this compacted layer and going sideways indicating, particularly on this dry soil, that the crop may well suffer from drought uh, because it will be lacking in moisture later on in the year. This will have a serious effect on, on final yields and therefore does need to be corrected. If soil compacts it can cause serious loss in crop yield and will prevent water from percolating through the soil leading to runoff. Diffuse water pollution causes damage to the environment and wastes valuable fertilisers and pesticides which should be growing food. But effective subsoiling depends on good weather and the windows of opportunity for a busy farmer may be limited. Obviously there will be a number of fields that need to be subsoiled any given year, but we've got to prioritise them because the chances are that not all fields will get done. So in an ideal world, fields that we want to do first are those fields which present the biggest risk to the environment and have got the thickest soil pan. The right fields, the right conditions, now all it needs is the right equipment and someone who knows how to set it all up. So what you need to do to get it right is to start with the tractor. It should have the right tyre pressures and be matched to the implement. It's important to, to maintain a good forward speed because in that respect you're going to put some good energy into the soil and help it to shatter more consistently across the full width. And from a time spacing point of view, you should really be twice the working depth as a, as a width between the tines centres. Having put the subsoil through, you can see now that the pan has been completely shattered and we've been able to break up that uh, pan that's there. So hopefully we've got rid of any potential yield loss problems we might have for next year. We've safeguarded the environment. I think we've done a really good job. And for the farmer, good subsoiling means better profits. What we've achieved by this, by removing the soil compaction, is we've enabled the poor performing areas, the headlands and the compacted areas in the fields, to perform as, rest of the, as well as the rest of the farm. And uh, we're yielding better now, and, and the benefits from doing this are fantastic. To find out how the CSF can help you to take measures to improve the environment, animal welfare and the efficiency of production, please visit our website.